Hello there Geminis, welcome to your tarot meeting. So I hope this video finds you well and thank you so much for joining me. Um, when I was shuffling out this spread, um, I saw a, quite an interesting image. So let me relay that to you first and then we'll go through the, the rest of the cards, okay? I feel like this is going to be a little bit of a muddled month. First of all, we're dealing with some retrograde energy and um, from the beginning of the month, especially the first week, things are going to feel a little bit muddled and things are going to be um, calling for your sense of, you know, decision making. And I feel like you, you are kind of forced or you feel compelled to make decisions, but it might not be the time to make these decisions. So I would say if you can wait, uh, wait until you know the 11th after the 15th of the month even, when we head into calmer waters for you to feel a little bit more certain about the decisions that you're going to make, okay? So that's just, um, I guess, to, to preface this reading, I feel like I just need to mention Mercury Retrograde because um, I'm getting that energy of Mercury Retrograde for all the signs that I've done readings for. And I feel like, especially for you, it does affect you and Virgos the most because, you know, uh, Mercury is your ruling planet. And what you have to do is kind of sit still and mull over the decision, especially the big important decisions that you're making and try to wait until mid-month when the Mercury retrograde period has calmed down and you have all the information at your disposal before you go ahead with a specific course of action. Um, the image that I saw was a little bit strange, so let me just talk about that. So first of all, I see this iron gate, okay? It looks like it's in a garden. It's um, It's been like worn by weather. The, the it's, it's a little bit rusty. It makes noise when it moves about. And I feel like there's a latch keeping the two parts of the gate in place, okay? It's like a very simple latching mechanism, and uh, it's a very old gate. And um, you can kind of see through it, and right behind it is a, a path kind of like leading up to higher ground. And um, there are like stones and trees and stuff like that, so it's kind of like a, a worn out path that not a lot of people that has been neglected and not a lot of people use this path so then it's kind of gated off okay and then in front of the gate what i see is like water rising towards the gate so i feel like it might be a flooding situation or whatever it is the water is like slowly rising 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 and getting to the very bottom of the gate it's like touching the the, the bottom and you, I feel like the, I see the water coming and then receding and then coming. And soon that motion creates uh, waves and the waves are getting a little bit stronger and stronger. And then it's crashing again against the gate and then it recedes and then it comes back and it crashes a little bit harder against the gate. And so the little latch in between the gate, um, what I feel is it's loosening up. Okay, it's, it's like um, the resistance is wearing off, is loosening up. And then later on, there's this bigger, like a, a bigger uh, wave crashing against the gate and the gate kind of unhinges and it swings open. And at that point, the path that whatever the path was that the gate was blocking, it's now accessible. And um, when I saw this image, I was thinking immediately, well, there, the water is rising and you need to get to safer ground. You need to get to higher ground. You need to get somewhere where you're not going to be pummeled by the waves or pummeled by the water. And this gate, you know, is blocking your way. And now it's like in a dire circumstance, situation has worked in your favor and it's blocking or it's blasting through this wave or this gate and now you're able to see that path that is ahead of you and you can take that path and you know get to higher ground so that you're safe okay so first of all um, I just want to say that when I saw this image I was thinking a lot more about like um, doors opening when there's extreme pressure okay it, it's sort of like I feel almost as if it's kind of like a last resort. It's something that we have to resort to, even though we didn't want to, even though we didn't think it was possible. 
um, for whatever reason, circumstances beyond our control or natural disasters or whatever the circumstance might be in your life, I feel like something is being swung open, a door swinging open, a new path that's laid out in front of you and it's laid out out of necessity, okay? So I feel like for the month of March, um, this is th this concept of things having to be done out of necessity is coming through. For whatever reason, you might have avoided, you know, this situation. You might have avoided um, because you thought it was going to go one way, you thought the situation was bad, or you thought like there was no way to repair a situation and you thought that there was only one path or you avoided a specific course of action because you didn't think it would yield the result that you you wanted and for whatever reason circumstances beyond your control is forcing you to pursue a specific path and then you realize that you know what it's not so bad right because once again it's a, a path that's leading you to higher ground where you have a better vantage point where you have safety where you have a drier area where you can you know thrive so i do feel here that there was a situation and um you might have been indecisive about and i feel like you might have avoided it you might not have want to wanted to deal with it and for the month of March, something is coming in to kind of force you to address the situation. It's kind of like water is literally at your doorstep. And when it's at our doorstep, we just feel like wherever we are, this or the status quo is no longer stable or is no longer dependable. And so we have to, you know, make contingency plans. We have to uh, resort to that one choice or that one decision that we didn't feel like we need, we wanted to make. And in the process of being forced to go that route or to take that specific course of action, you're realizing that it might be in your best interest and that, you know, things might not have, uh, might not even be that bad, okay? So I feel like that, that's what it, 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 it seems like the month of March is, is for me. It's like a path that is created out of a sense of necessity, okay? It needed to be done. And for whatever reason, it wasn't viable in the past, but now the timing, the circumstances are culminating in such a way where that's the most viable path or that is the only path, okay? Um, so I'm going to go back to that image in a little bit. I want to talk about um, a few more energies that are coming through in the spread because I feel like you have a lot to work with here okay first of all the card that you have here is literally the magician and um this is somebody who conjures something out of nothing conjuring things out of thin air this is somebody who's uh very gifted with creating things manipulating energies and um i feel like you know manifesting bringing something into existence that did not exist before and so this is a card about mastery. It's somebody who has a lot of skills, and this is what I normally associate with like a Gemini person. They have a lot of hobbies, a lot of skills, uh, the gift of the gap, being able to persuade other people to do you know their bidding, and especially um, being. Uh, I feel like you know you're you're verbose, but you're also very very persuasive, and so there's a lot of skills, there's a lot of knowledge, and there's a lot of wisdom. Um, embedded in this card and I feel like for many of you there are a lot of talents that you possess and you're not really sure which direction to go when it comes to you know um, using your talents to make money or even using your talents to um, it, it's sort of like having to choose between you know different talents or different skill sets or different interests and trying to make a career out of it or even like having so many things that you're interested in, you don't know what to tackle first. Or I also feel like, you know, having so many different jobs that you're interested in, that you're capable of doing, that you're qualified for, and you don't even know which one to apply for. So I feel like there are a lot of options here, there are a lot of choices, and you're grappling 
um, between the many choices that are at your disposal because they all seem really attractive choices, okay? So I feel like in a career type of a way, in a life path type of a way, you might have very, uh, a lot of options and you're not really sure um, which one to go forward with, okay? We have here as well the Three of Cups and the Three of Cups is all about options and choices. This is a very celebratory card, but in this deck, the way that it's sort of like spinning in circles, it's about indecisiveness. It's about wanting the option that stands out from the rest, wanting something like specific and wanting something that encapsulates all of these things that you're really interested in, wanting to find that one thing that meets all the criteria. And as a result of it, you're kind of like not really making a decision or you're kind of not choosing amongst all these options because you're waiting for something that will encapsulate or that will have all of these elements that you love before you can really commit to it, okay? So I feel like it is a, a situation where you're maintaining like neutrality, okay? It's like not making, not taking action, remaining very, very neutral, still assessing the situation and prolonging the decision-making process because you don't want to make the wrong move. You don't want to make the wrong choice. You feel like you want a sign, you want a signal, you want something to indicate to you there is a choice that is best out of those options and just so that you're sure what you're getting yourself into is the best optimal outcome. Um, I feel for many of you this is like work related and I do feel like you're at a point where you're you've mastered your craft okay some of you might have started a new job and you feel like you know I know what I'm doing now I feel like I've already um, met the threshold or you know have hit that limit and i'm not learning anymore i'm looking for a new opportunity i'm scanning the horizon for greener pastures i'm trying to see if there's a, another option that is a better fit out there you might be you know looking at other opportunities creative ventures even for you to get yourself involved in some of you have already mastered the work that you're um you're in you might have been in it for quite some time and I feel like the routine, the, the monotony, the um, it's, it's no longer exciting, it's no longer fun. You feel like you're just going around in circles and you're kind of spinning your wheels and also, you know, it's like that cycle, it, the monotony, it's over and over and over again. It's very repetitive. And so you don't feel like it's challenging anymore. You don't feel that you're growing or learning as much anymore. And so you're thinking about other options that might be on the table for you, or you're even thinking of uh, looking for more opportunities that might be out there. With the Three of Cups, I normally think of this as options that are just kind of like given to you. Um, somebody might tell you, you know, here's an opportunity here, here's an organization I'm looking at, here's a think tank, here's a, um, uh, here's a, like a, a nonprofit organization or an NGO that I'm, I'm uh, exploring. So I feel like they're bringing you ideas and you're trying to figure out, and I feel like all of these ideas seem very attractive, seem very enticing, but so it's not like they're dull ideas or dull options. They're just very enticing and you don't know which one you want to settle with or you don't know which one you want to apply for or you might be applying for all of them and trying to figure out you know, what's going to come in first. What's going to be the first place that picks me up? I also feel in some regards this could be you know, options when it comes to love and romantic relationships. Having a lot of suitors, having um, a lot of people kind of like I literally feel like wrapped around your fingers, okay? And I don't feel like this is uh, leading somebody on or being like, um, um, or, or, or being, I guess, deceitful uh, with people. I, I don't get that, not with this combination. But I just feel like these options are great and you're trying to figure out, you know, who's the most compatible or who's the most, or, or who's the best option for me or you know who's like the most um, viable long-term prospect so you're looking for signs you're looking for like signals to indicate to you who is going to be the best option or what is going to be the best option what's going to stand out from the crowd and what's going to be the most viable 
um, person or job or thing or location, or whatever it is, I feel like you're you're、um, you're choosing from amongst a bunch of very good options. Okay, which is a really good place to be because we want options and we want choices, and we also want you know full access to information. So I feel like you're still in a situation where you're reassessing. And then I also feel for others of you,、um, there's a lot of,、um, it, especially if you're in publishing, okay. And I, I think I might have mentioned this last month. I can't remember, but if you're in publishing, if you're in、um, any type of like、um, situation where you're kind of marketing yourself, so like if you're a writer, if you're a singer, if you're a performer, and you kind of have to sell. I, I don't want to say sell yourself. That sounds. Terrible, but you have to promote yourself in some capacity. I feel like you've already got it, okay? And you have multiple people that might be vying for you to either sign on with them for a book deal, for example, sign on on with them for like a specific art project, sign on with them for a performance, sign on with them for like a record deal, whatever it is. I do sense that you have the options at your disposal. And I feel like you're mulling over this decision, and because decision making is coming out so early on in the spread, I would urge you to wait until the fifteenth of the month, when we are completely out of the Mercury、um, shadow period, before you make any decisions that have long term ramifications. Okay, so sit still, mull it over,、uh, really assess. And ruminate over these、uh, choices that are kind of like at your feet before you decide what to go ahead with. Okay, because I feel like there might be more information that is revealed. Okay, and I feel like whoever, if it's like a job or if it's like a, a love interest, I feel like there's an energy of somebody who's a little bit controlling. They might want you to be at their beck and call, for example. They might want you to curb your creative、um, flair to do things exactly the way that they want. And these things might not be revealed to you until you know、uh, we until we progress through like that first week of、um, March. And you might have a little bit more information about this person's、uh, either their personality or their intentions. Or their affinity to be a little bit controlling, and so if they're showing that aspect of themselves, it might rule out, or it might be like an indicator to you that this might not be a viable option for you either in work, in somebody who's either you know you're working under, who's managing you, or even like a potential、uh, relationship partner. Okay, so these things are going to start to. Show up, and I feel like it's going to be very subtle. But if you have like a lot of good options to choose from, you want to choose from the best. So, the qualities revealed about this person in particular might be a little bit unsavory, and it will make you reassess your decision. Okay. Um. So leave those big decisions until after the fifteenth, when we have Mercury going direct, and we are out of that Mercury retrograde、uh, shadow period for you to make these important decisions. All right. So I also feel here.、Um, I'm seeing two people, and I feel like there is a either like a compromise or a conversation. That has been had. Okay, I feel like one person is spinning their wheels, and the other person is trying to keep the relationship together. That's what it feels like to me. And、uh, I want to talk about these two cards: Three of Cups. Once again, spinning your wheels, and the Chariot, trying to find direction. Um. So, I feel like this is a relationship. Okay, this is somebody that.、Um, You have a little bit of power struggle with, okay? And your energy here is the magician. This is someone who's like、uh, very creative, okay? This is like the Gemini energy. It's someone who's very creative, who 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 takes life very lightly, okay?、Um, and who, who they just want to have fun. They just want to have a good time, and they 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 go through life in a very lighthearted, in a very like. Flamboyant manner. It's like the social butterfly, and then we have the emperor. And the emperor just feel the weight of this person. It's all about 
duty and responsibility, and it's all about you know control, and it's 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 all about like everything is very very serious. So I feel like opposing energies between you as the magician and whoever it is that you're dealing with as the emperor. So this is someone who could you know in your eyes they could be a little bit of a Debbie Downer. Uh, they're too serious for their own good, and they approach life in a very methodical, in a very serious way. And a lot of the times, they don't really know how to lighten up. They don't really know how to take a joke. And I feel like it's hard for you to communicate with this person. You want to joke around, but they take offense to the things that that might be said. And then at the same time, I feel like they're all like either very work, work, work oriented, and there's nothing else in their life. Or they just really don't know how to have fun. Or whenever you're around them, you just feel the weight of responsibility. Okay. Um. So there is a little bit of power struggle here, and let me talk a little bit about that, and I'll talk about the the rest of the cards in a little bit. So one person here feels like they're carrying the weight of the relationship. They're trying to move the situation along, and I feel like they understand that the two of you are very different. That it requires a lot of compromise. That it requires a lot of like、um, give and take, and you know, working with each other as a unit. And then I feel like the other person,、um, and I feel like it's more your energy. So they're all about responsibility, and you know. Um, getting from point A to point B, they're very, very serious-minded, and then I also feel like the the seriousness is in everything that they do. It's not just in relationships; it's in life, it's in in work, it's in their family life, it's in their interpersonal relationship, it's in the way they discipline their their mind. And so this person is is just very methodical. They're trying to find the fastest route from point A to point B, and I feel like you know you don't mind if your life path meanders. You don't mind taking detours. You don't mind taking unexpected pit stops. You don't mind to you know like it's it, it, for you. It's not a, so much about the destination. It's more about the journey. And so the two of you philosophically are coming at life from like a different perspective, and as a result of it, it is very difficult to. Move together as a unit, to like work together as a unit. So once again, I just feel like this person doesn't want to lose control, okay? And I feel like it has a lot. It's it's not like a personality flaw. I think like it's more of a survival mechanism for them. This is something they've had to do at a very young age, and it was very survival oriented. And as a result of that, they take life very seriously. You know, they mean what they say, and they do what they 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 promise, and so they're very stable. They're very trustworthy and、um, very reliant, and so they have some amazing, really good qualities about them. And then I feel like they expect you to be a certain way, and you feel almost like you have to change yourself, or you have to cater, or or you have to like be something that you're not in order to move this relationship along. I also feel like they're making,、um, they're, they're expecting things from you, or expecting you to be a certain way, or expecting you to step up, or expecting you to chip in, or expecting you to move the relationship in a specific way, or even expecting you to put in the work, so that the two of you, so that they feel like things are fair, or so that they feel like the two of you are, I guess, like on the same boat, or they feel like the two of you. Are、um, headed in the same direction, so that's what I'm feeling here. I feel like somebody is kind of like tightening the reins in your life, and wanting you to either behave a specific way, or wanting you to do what it what they expect from you, or wanting to be you to behave in a way that they expect. Okay, and I do sense that the weight of the responsibility、um, that they're putting on you, it can feel a little bit restrictive. Okay, and so going back to that message or the image that I saw about you know a new path being created out of necessity. Okay, I feel like it pertains to this situation here, where one person is. Almost like a disciplinarian, and the other person just wants to, just might want to rebel, just for the sake of rebellion. 
Okay. And so I feel like one person wants to live without responsibility, and the other person is all about responsibility. And so the two people can't really see eye to eye, can't really work together as a unit. Might have a lot of arguments and disagreements over these two, you know, philosophical ideals. And it's really hard to work as a unit when you don't really agree on these things. And then I feel like one person is resentful that the other person is like almost authoritative. And then the other person is kind of resentful that the other person is a little bit too frivolous, too carefree, too like、um, um, possibly like prone to procrastination. Okay, and so what's happening here is I do see no matter what the two of you are going to be able, to, you're going to need to. But I feel like there's going to be some type of a Closing of the cycle of this perpetual, you know, the disciplinarian and the other person wanting to rebel. Okay, so it, it's it's not so much a role reversal, but I'm starting to see a situation where the two of you are coming around to one another, and I feel like a lot of it has to do with external pressure in your environment. So whatever is coming in, there might be additional pressures. Put or imposed upon the both of you, and you have to work together as a unit. It's it's like out of necessity, you have to work together as a unit. You have to learn how to navigate each other's energy, and in the process of being forced or having you know imposed upon, and you have to work together. You're starting to realize that you know what their sense of responsibility and their、um, Their 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 reliance is really, I guess, like their stability, their reliance, and the way in which they can be counted on. I feel that you're starting to admire that quality, and then at the same time, they're looking at you and they're thinking your creativity, your ability to you know be flexible, and to be malle malleable. And to kind of like roll with the punches and be spontaneous, it's very admirable. So you're starting to see merits in one another, and as a result of it, out of that sense of necessity of having to work together, the two of you are able to overcome your differences in order to, you know, move along together without creating friction. Okay, so. I feel for most of you, this is like a relationship where you know, because of hardships, because of necessity, because of you, whatever is imposed upon the relationship from the external environment, it's like the pressure is on. Now we need to work together. Now we need to hash things out. Now we need to find solution. And as a result of it, that you have to come together and you have to learn to to get along. And in the process of getting along, I feel like. You're starting to realize that you know there's strength in numbers, there's safety in numbers as well, and that because the two of you are so different, that creatively solving problems together will lead you to a better optimal solution. Okay, hence that door. You know,、um, pressure needs to be exerted on that gate in order to, for it to swing open and to create a new path. For you, so I feel like you've reached some type of an epiphany, like an awakening, a reassessment, or a realignment with another person, and it's helping the situation move along in a smoother way. All right.、Um, so for some of you, I feel like this could be, you know, like、uh, at, in a work situation, and you know, sometimes we meet somebody, and for whatever reason, we feel like we don't really jive well with them. Just energetically, we just feel like we're out of sync with the other person, and then you might have somebody like that at your work environment. And I feel like this might be indicative of a work situation where you don't, you might not have gotten along, but out of necessity, you have to work together, and you realize that you know that person is actually pretty great. They're reliable. They're、uh, they're a man or a woman of their word. They、um, they get down to business. They get things done. They're very proactive. They take charge. They have great leadership qualities. They're not a tyrant, and they're actually very、um, reliable. And so I feel like these qualities、uh, you you're starting to admire and and see these really really good qualities about the other person. Okay. 
So this is where you are now. So for the month of March, we have here the world and the Ace of Cups. So these are really amazing cards. The Ace of Cups is about new beginnings when it comes to your emotional state. And this is usually like brand new love or feeling um, that sense of emotional satisfaction. Okay. The world is about publishing. It's about getting recognition. It's about like um, creative projects as well being brought forth into the world. So for many of you, I feel especially um, actors, artists, singers, or even people who are in the, uh, the, the fine arts, performing arts, I feel like you're getting a lot of recognition for the work that you bring forth, okay? Especially in the creative field. Um, especially like um, people landing gigs like in television landing gigs as like an I'm hearing like a news anchor okay so if you're in uh, communication in radio or even even like a TV personality I feel like you're landing your role you're landing a really really good gig and you're landing something that will bring you a lot of visibility so I don't know if the money is there but I definitely feel like the visibility is there you're going to be in the limelight and I feel that it's going to open new, uh, a lot of new avenues for you, like new contacts, new ways to do things. So for example, if you're a voice actor, you might venture into like um, theater, musical, uh, or even, you know, TV acting. Okay. If you've been working behind the scenes as a voice actor or even as an animator, you're going to go to those, what are those like, they're similar to like Comic Con, Symposium or even panel discussions and you're going to be in the limelight so i feel like you're coming out behind the scenes and moving into the limelight so people are going to recognize your face they're they're going to recognize your name and there's a lot of like visibility associated with you for the month of march once again um with you know uh with public image it comes with a lot of scrutiny of course people can't always be happy with what you have to say but um, just because there's so much visibility uh, you want to be a little bit careful especially you know the first two weeks of the month um, to be careful with what you're with the messages that you're trying to convey make sure you take the time to over explain and to thoroughly explain yourself so that things don't get misconstrued okay and then things don't get taken out of context so make sure you over explain Okay, and then just be mindful about what you say and how you portray yourself in a public setting because I feel like all eyes are on you and there's a lot of visibility and I, whenever I see, you know, whenever I see a lot of visibility, I always think of, you know, the, it being a double-edged sword because it can also come with a lot of public scrutiny, okay? Um, I'm, what I'm also feeling as well is, I mentioned before, some of you have options and choices and you're trying to narrow down this option. And um, I do feel, the with the Ace of Cups, this is like um, a great love, okay? This is like um, a relationship that is, I feel like it's kind of like falling in love with a, with a person. So I feel for many of you, there's somebody here and they're definitely attached to this cluster right here. So the way this person is, um, we have the world and the world usually indicates someone who's very well traveled. Okay, someone who's, who's, who's been around the globe, who might be a globe trotter. And somebody who's very aware when it comes to like current events, history, um, international affairs, um, somebody who like knows what's going on with the world, someone who's not just wrapped up in themselves and their their street, their city, their block, their family. They're very worldly. They understand what's going on out there in the world. They, they have traveled, they have dealt with people from foreign backgrounds. And so it's somebody that has like a myriad of stories, anecdotes, and information to share. So this is somebody who's um, actually very up your alley because I feel like communication flows really well between the two of you and I feel like you spark off each other in a really good way. Um, they are very inspiring to be with so I feel like you, you've got somebody in your corner here who's, um, who's a very good match for you, okay? Um, what I'm feeling is 
I feel like one person is like really magical, and then the other person is a little bit intimidated.、Um, and I feel like the person who's intimidated is very shy. And so, in order to mask their shyness, they're 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 putting on kind of like a tough air. And rather than 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 at、um, I guess like acting like they're very impressed, like wow you did that or you went there or you live there or you speak that language,、um, one person is like playing it off like they're not impressed. They're gonna ask follow up questions, but they're playing it off like they're not impressed. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody who might be a little bit standoffish. Or who might like pretend like they're not interested, or who might be intim intimidated, and in the process of being intimidated, they feel a little bit uncomfortable, and and so they kind of toughen up, and then they they act a little bit like aloof, or in order to mask their shyness, they put on like a, a tough facade. Okay, so don't let that fool you. I feel like this person is also very much interested. It's just the way that they they hide or mask their emotion because they do want to be in control. And I feel the person might be this character here, the emperor.、Um, this is someone who's very serious. I, I just get a very very serious vibe with this person. They could be male or female. It doesn't even matter. Um, they have it's like a, a hard. They, they've got a hard exterior, like a hard shell. They're all about business. They're all about responsibility. They're all about you know.、Um, they're they're just very serious minded, and with this world energy, they could also be very well traveled. And I usually think of this、um, as like somebody who's like outside of your type. Okay, it's somebody that you you never would have found attractive in the past, but for whatever reason, they're they're out of the norm. They're out of the the norm in terms of who you date or who you find attractive, who you would find attractive, or who you normally the type that you normally go for. So I feel like there's、uh, somebody here that is really、um, catching your attention, and I also feel like there's.、Um, An escalation, like taking a relationship to the next level, and then I also feel like you might be narrowing down your options, or you are trying to, you know, put someone through some tests, and you're realizing that the two of you work really well together, or as a unit, the two of you have the same goals, have the same ideals, even though you might be from very different walks of life. Even though personality-wise you're very different, but the two of you work together really well as a unit. So this is the chariot card, and the chariot card, you have these two fish going in different directions, and it requires the the will of God in order to move them in the right direction, like it, so that they're not working at cross purposes with each other, so that they can, you know. Uh, inch along or move along in the same direction. So I feel like there's something here, where the two of you might just be as stubborn, where the two of you might butt heads like ideologically, but for whatever reason, you find that the two of you ultimately work well together, and that I guess regardless of the differences, you have the same ideologies to a certain extent. And you realize that you can move forward together, okay? And then I also feel like there's something here about what I'm seeing is like I have two people here, and they didn't understand each other before. One for person was too firm, and then the other person was too wishy-washy. One person was too like serious, and then the other person was too non-committal. And so there might have been like a repulsion. But for whatever reason, you're starting to see eye to eye. You're starting to admire certain qualities about each other, and you're starting to understand each other a little bit more, which allows this to happen, which allows the two of you to really, you know, understand each other and like each other, and for a relationship to form. Okay. So, I'm looking at these four cards、um, independently. So some of you are dealing with this, and I feel like by the end of the month we have a few more things here.、Um, I feel like for many of you, we have some really good news that are coming through, and I'm hearing like really good news, but also very unexpected from a very unexpected source. Okay, I do feel there's like blast from the past, like an ex or somebody who you know just disappear. 
um, from your life and all of a sudden there is comeback. So I, I feel like when this person comes in, there is potentially, we have page of cups here and I usually think of this as like an apology. Um, somebody trying to reach out in a very shy way, they don't know how to break the ice, they don't know how to approach you, they don't know what to say they're at a loss for words and 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 it's like it's somebody who's who's really shy and they're very fearful of rejection so when they make um when when they want to reach out and communicate they want to make sure that they choose their words very carefully so that you will respond because you know turning them down or not responding it would really hurt them so this is somebody who has a very fragile ego and i feel like in their shyness they're coming in either with an apology or even to reach out and then eventually they're, they're trying to test the water to see how you feel before they can you know um offer the apology i have the judgment card and i feel like this is going to happen very quickly very swiftly and when this person comes in um i feel like you're going to be at a loss for words as to what to say it's going to be very unexpected because once again the the judgment card is contact communication but the way that it happens it's very unexpected so i do have this coming through especially the latter part of march it could be like around march 15th all the way until like the 22nd that's what i'm feeling strongly um but i do sense here it's a situation that you might have closed the cycle on already like in your mind in your heart you might have already physically just release and let go of and so when this communication comes in it is very unexpected and you might not know what to do with this information i also feel for many of you um you might have moved on with someone else and they're feeling they might energetically feel that you've moved on and then they're trying to reach out for communication just to kind of like pull you back i don't feel it's malicious or i don't feel like it's intentional to kind of like you know cause you cause a rift between you and your new person i just feel like energetically um there might have been things that needed that needed to be cleared up between the two of you or there might have been like um longing from their end to kind of apologize or something like that and so when they feel that energetically you've pulled away because you have someone new or you are just pulling away from them, I feel like they're reaching out to try to reconnect, to try to open up that channel of communication, okay? Once again, I'm getting that. It's sort of like um, things have to get bad in order for this person to realize that they needed to make amends, they needed to reach out. So it's sort of like, you know, that, that doorway will open when there's pressure exerted, okay? So in that way, I feel like, you know, the, the pressure, the, the, the water at, at you, literally at your doorstep or at their doorstep, those things need to happen. The, those circumstances need to be ideal for them, like the pressure needs to be there for them to budge, for them to make a move, for them to um move a situation along okay so you might have been waiting for communication from this person for quite some time but the pressure needed to be exerted from their end or needed to be exerted on them in order for them to see that they needed to be the one to make the move all right and at the very end we have some really good amazing cards we have here the six of wands and the page of pentacles um career-wise this is a very good indicator that there's like, um, you know, for those who are looking for jobs, for gigs, for um, projects, even for financiers, if you have like um, a project and you're looking for somebody to fund the project, or if you have like an idea and you need a sponsor, these are um, cards that indicate there's um, backers, supporters, um, people working behind the scenes in order to give you the either the monetary support <clears throat> or even just the verbal support or even just the emotional support. There's a lot of support. There's a lot of like boosting up happening behind the scenes. The Six of Wands is about a victory. This is pretty much, you know, getting the recognition, getting the accolades, having that spotlight shining on you where you're getting a lot of attention. And the Page of Pentacles, for those of you, for example, who are looking for work, 
I feel like there's a job offer coming through, and with the Page of Pentacles, it's not like a magnificent, you know,、um, life-changing and and、uh, type of a job where there's a lot of、um, where there's a lot of money involved. I feel like this is kind of like. Let's say, for example, if you're working on a contract basis, right?、Uh, somebody might tell you, "Hey, I have a project. You can work on it for three months. I'll pay you like fifty percent up front and fifty percent at the end of the the project." So it's sort of like a retainer fee or something that is. There's money involved. It's not a huge sum of money, but it's a moderately good amount. Okay. And then I also feel training opportunities, opportunities to travel in order to train, opportunities for even、um, giving out training sessions to people, or being、um, the one to facilitate some type of training. Okay, so you have some really really good things here that indicate you will be in the spotlight, and there will be financial, you know, windfall or even、uh, jobs or even short term gigs or even like whatever it is、um, that relates to work and career and projects and things that you want to un- you want to undertake. You have a lot of blessings coming in that regards. All right. So I know this video is a little bit long. I'm trying to keep all the videos at like 35、uh, minutes maximum. But you have a lot of positive things coming through.、Um, once again, delay these major decisions until possibly you know the、uh, 15th of the month if you can, so that you have a lot more information. I feel that will be coming in the second week of March, and you need to kind of sit still until that information comes in. And it will reveal to you what the、um, the optimal outcome for you is going to be before you make that decision. All right.、Um, once again, for those who are still emailing me, I'm no longer doing private readings. I do have a link in the description box below for a psychic. Her name is Bridget, and she's based out of California. So if you're looking for guidance, I highly recommend that you book a reading with her. I also have a link in the description box below for an artist. She's based out of California, and she does like、um, alcohol-based painting on canvas and also on、um, different mediums. So, if you're interested in artwork, you can do、uh, you can commit.